Hi everyone, good morning. How are you all doing today? It is Janine in the Little Nun's Room coming live to you from East London in quarantine still. Well, actually that's not quite true, is it? But we're in lockdown, but we're staying alert. We're socially distancing. We're still, we're out there, but we're not really, we're not really, are we? I have gotten dressed up today because I really want to be out there. I'm so fed up. I'm so fed up. I really, I want to go to a restaurant and sit down and be served lovely food. I want to stand on the top of the tallest building and have a cocktail. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not even bothered with that. Just want to have a look at the view and just see vastness. I want to fly in a plane really, really fast and really, really far somewhere and go and see my beautiful friends, new beautiful friends I've made during this time as well. I just want to travel. I just want to, oh, just, just, just all of those things. I'm sure that some of you are feeling the same way as me. Those of you who really, really love travel as much as I do. And um, it is frustrating, but the only way I can think right now of helping that feeling is by getting inspired about travel. Now, sometimes I find that really hard because it makes me more frustrated. But this morning I was in the kitchen and I went to make my breakfast. I was making a protein pancake this morning, very, very healthy. And I saw on my bunch of bananas that I bought yesterday a little sticker. And that sticker said, Ecuador. Yay! Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Can you see? Was it that? Oh, oh, yes, it is. It is the right way around. I've done this post a few times, and uh, the banana's now going a bit ripe <laughs> because it's like <laughs> I'm showing how long it takes to do these posts. Sometimes one take wonder. Not yet. So I very rarely buy bananas actually I don't don't eat them that often but I was super excited to see Ecuador because it is such a big place if you know me well you know about Ecuador you know about my big trip so I went for the first time to, when I was 39 don't mind telling you that the reason I'm telling you that is actually because I want to inspire women and young people and in fact anyone to get out and traveling get out and traveling as much as you possibly can just do it because it is just the most amazing, amazing thing. And when I travel, I don't travel just for a beach. I don't just travel to sit on a beach and uh, sunbathe. Uh, my skin doesn't work that way. I travel, <laughs> but I travel and also alcohol doesn't work with me in the sunshine either. I'm not, it's not a brilliant combo for me. A release, a, um, a let go, uh, an inspiration for me is just getting out there and being immersed in culture where I'm not the same as everybody else that I'm completely different to everyone else and I absolutely love that feeling I have no idea why but I just love immersing myself in those situations and um so my love for Ecuador came through my friend Sandra who is Ecuadorian we lived together about oh crikey a long time ago let's just say that and at the time she was dating an English guy uh, she had to go back eventually, her visa ran out, she had to go back to Ecuador, uh, but she had been studying over here, and um, and her English boyfriend, John, followed, and they got married, and they invited me to the wedding, and I was so gutted, because I couldn't go, I could not afford to go at the time that they invited me, I really, I can't, what an honour, what a delight, what a gift to be invited to someone's special occasion like that, and, and on the other side of the world as well, I mean, I was in tears. I remember when the, it came through the post. I've still got it. I've still got it. Not not around me here. I've got, still got, got it somewhere. But I was just absolutely bawling my eyes out. I just, I love weddings. Absolutely, absolutely love weddings. Um, So, so I couldn't go. But what I did from that point on, I said, right, I'm going to save and save and save and save. And I'm going. I'm going to go. So we kept in touch. And I went the next year when I was 39. And when I got to Miami airport, I realised it's the first time ever in my entire life that I had travelled that far on my own. I've been to America when I was 21, if you watch my New York episode. I've been to America on my own when I was 21. Young female, young person, female, solo traveller. I did that. I managed that. It, that was in me. It's like, right, power, power to myself. Um, but I got, got to Miami and I realised, and I'd been to Miami before too, so I knew it was familiar familiar ground, familiar territory. So I just thought, right, this is it now. The minute I get on this plane, I'm going to be going to f the furthest I've ever been on this planet. And 
I'm 39, I'm 39 years old. It's not that that's too old, it's, it's, it, it, everything is as it's meant to be in life. That's, I really believe that, but I mean, go. If, you, if you, there's anything that you do in life, just go and travel and do it before you're 39. Do it all before you're 39. I mean, get out there. So, um, so yeah, so I'm walking in, in Miami. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. We're changing planes. And in front of me, I see the pilot and the first um, the first officer. And the, um, oh, for who was um, flying, flying us. And uh, I can't remember the airline now, but it was a Spanish airline. But I just remember the pilot was this, like, really suave gorgeous like latino guy like really 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 fit you know exactly like you want a pilot to look like and then and then the first officer was a woman but what i loved about her imagine like j-lo j-lo with a with a hat on no i'm not joking she was stunning she was wearing the highest heels i mean like we're talking clickety clack clickety clack 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 down down the thing in front of me and i i was i was like wow this is just awesome this is just so exactly the experience i want to be having right now so so anyway so uh, they get onto the plane first and then and i i don't know about you but if ever i see anyone who's in in charge um i don't know policemen firemen uh police, police people fire people john bpc i'm sorry i always give a salute um i was in tesco's the other day and a few fire fire men there were two guys walked in and I, I i saluted them they were just really laughing but you know it's like people in in positions of responsibility isn't it and um and they deserve they do deserve respect they've tra- tra- trained really hard for it and they're taking a plane full of people up into the sky it's just like the most incredible thing so anyway salute get on the plane i'm like right okay i'm ready for this i'm feeling ready for this so eventually get to get to ecuador um feeling all those feelings writing down all these things and um and needless to say that i had i had the time of my life during those couple of weeks that i went to see uh, sandra i mean like the most generous hosts um sandra's dad um was living um i don't know this is the same for him for him right now but sandra's dad was living in this building and she's like right we're gonna go see dad tonight i'm like okay okay cool so we, we drive around and people live in um like uh block mostly flat living living in flat well, let's say apartments apartments but like really really nice apartments and um uh, they even like have maids rooms and things in them, you know, very, very nice. So we drive up to this place and, um, you know, I, I just kind of open to everything. And I'm like, Sandra, why, why is there a guard? There was these like two guards outside this building uh, where your dad lives. I said, why's, just, why's there a guard out there? She said, oh, because the, um, the vice president lives there too. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> It was a beautiful, beautiful um, place. And what I loved about it, especially, um, it uh, it had these incredible glass windows that overlooked the runway to the airport. Um, so the glass windows were really soundproofed, but the run, you could see the planes coming into land. So it, we were having drinks and uh, watching the planes coming in and it was just the most fantastic experience. There's so many more things that I want to say about Ecuador. I mean, I've been there probably six times now since then. I've, I've tried to go once a year. That stopped about um, a few years ago. Not not through um, uh, want really, but um, but when when my mum died, I felt I, I started to get a little bit more nervous. It's like you have to kind of relearn to be brave again. Um, I know everyone has different ways of. Um, grieving but but the day I go back is going to be one heck of a party because I do have so many friends I've got friends in Quito I've got friends in um, Cuenca I've got friends in Montanita which is like a really cool beachy resort um uh where I stayed for a bit I've got friends in Salinas which is down right down in the south it's a beautiful beautiful country and um at some point I'll, I'll I'll tell you a bit more um about it and um and also for on my for what happened on my my 40th birthday when I went because that's where I was I spent my um 40th in Ecuador so just a banana a little sticker this is where I get my inspiration from each day I'm never quite sure what I'm going to do I've got things on the wall written down and people would like give me suggestions but um but yeah from a tiny little banana sticker to um dressing up a little bit feeling a bit chichi a little bit 
I just had actually a little bit of salsa dance in the garden because I just love salsa dancing um and uh and all things all things latino so send in love um if you're feeling like I'm feeling today go on a little a little memory trip enliven dress up a little bit and uh, here's the bank holiday weekend after after all so if you like please subscribe please follow my posts I really love that you follow them and um and I love sharing my stories for you so take care speak soon bye I'm gonna say love you love you bye